Defend yourself with a walking cane. I'm going to start with the answer, yes. But I'm going to get into the what, why, and how. Some of the basics of self-defense cane training. So when you want to know whether or not you can defend yourself, we're going to start with yes, but I want you to know how, why, and, and what. And where, for that matter, where are you going to use it? First thing I'm going to say is that what it is, is a walking cane with a crook on the end. So we have to define it this way. This one is about 33, 34 inches. This is made by Cane Masters. The link is below if you want to see what the Cane Masters canes are. It has a little bit wider here because it's a self-defense cane. This allows me to do this kind of spinning, and we'll go over why we do the spinning in a little bit. But first thing you have to know is that when I say cane, when you're asking yourself, can you use a walking cane to defend yourself, it can be any cane that you get from the store, from the pharmacy, through the internet, as long as it has this crook on one end, has the shaft, in this case, it's made out of wood. You can have one made out of metal. And they have lighter metals like aluminum. It can be made out of some kind of plastic or polymer. Uh, there's a company called K-Bar that makes a walking cane. But as long as it has this crook and it has this length, they usually come with some type of soft tip so you don't mess up the floors. Then you have a walking cane. It's also a medical device, which leads us into the why of a walking cane, why you would use a walking cane for self-defense. So when you're asking yourself, can you use a cane for self-defense or a walking cane? The answer is yes, because of the why. The Americans with Disabilities Act in this country allows you to take this everywhere you go, anywhere and everywhere. You can take it through TSA, get on the plane, sit with it on the plane. You can take this into any government building. You can take this into your kid's school. You can take this into the bank. You can take this on a, pl or a bus or a train or the subway. And the, no one can stop you from taking it there because it's a medical device. And the next part of that is the HIPAA laws, right? So you have the Americans with Disability Act, which allows for accessibility, allows you to take it everywhere. But then the HIPAA Act comes in. The HIPAA is the, um, the patient the, or health, health information privacy act. So it's your right to have, not have anybody ask you, why do you need it, right? Or prove that you need it. The police officer can't come up, TSA agent can't stop you and say, show me your doctor's note, what's your condition? You can say, I'm protected by the HIPAA laws here in this country. This is unique to America, but this, a lot of these uh, laws exist other places, other countries too. But with the HIPAA law, you can say, you're not allowed to ask me, it's my right to carry it. And it's my right to my privacy, my condition, so I'm allowed to take it with me wherever I go. Hello, Magnus uh, joined us from Sweden. Hello, Magnus. So if you have your walking cane, we said it's a medical device, which leads us to the why. Can you defend yourself with a cane? Yes, because you can take it wherever you go and no one's allowed to stop you and make you prove that you need it. So now you have a medical device that goes with you wherever you go. But then the next, the next part of why is can you defend yourself with a cane? Yes, why would you need one? Well, the streets seem less safe in some places. Some places around the world, some places in the United States, and I'm talking specifically about big cities that are run by uh, liberal governments, and they're allowing the criminals, I, I heard the statistic in uh, California, they let like 70,000 criminals just out. New York City, over half of the criminals, they just let them out during COVID, and they have these new laws where they don't need cash, it's called no cash bail. They just go in and they come out the same day, the same hour. They can go and they can physically assault somebody, hurt somebody, be out on the streets. We saw what happened last week with some of the protests in uh, Los Angeles and this group of people were coming down, going to a restaurant and they start to assault the people if they are from a certain part of the world or if they have a certain religion and they're just pulling them out and beating them. And so the why, can you defend yourself with a cane, why leads into, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's less safe. The streets are less safe. And I don't, you know, you can look at statistics. This isn't a political stance. Statistics are showing violent crime rose by hundreds of percent in certain communities and over 25% more murders just in the United States since the beginning of this year, 25% more. And all last year during COVID, there's a lot more desperation. There's a lot more fear, anxiety. The fact is it's a lot less safe. So that's the why. Can you defend yourself with a cane? Yes. Why would you need to? Because be your own first responder. Take responsibility for your own safety, your own protection, the safety and protection of your family. Now, it also will improve health and wellness. Your cane, training with a walking cane for self-defense, requires you to do certain motions, 
We call this the cane spinning. Cane spinning engages your core. We bring it over and back. This is all to develop proprioception, spatial awareness, timing, and distance. All of these exercises improve your general health and wellness. And there are four categories of health and wellness that we define as you're using your cane for self-defense, as you're training cane self-defense. Health is flexibility. You're gonna get a lot more flexible. Mobility, you're gonna be able to move around better. And this is whether you're standing or sitting. You can do all this sitting in the chair. That's why I have the chair out. So health is flexibility, mobility, strength, and endurance. You're gonna get more muscular strength, your tendons, your bones, everything's gonna get stronger, denser, and you're gonna have more endurance. You're gonna be able to defend yourself and stay in the fight longer for self-defense. So that leads us into the how of can you defend yourself with a cane? And this is my favorite part of the, the subject because the how is very, very important. Uh, Greg can't stay long today. Thank you for great joining us, Greg. And thank you for joining us, everybody else. I wanted to talk this knife real quick. This is in the how. Can you defend yourself with a cane? The answer is yes. Uh, if you don't have the curve, so Dallas is asking, Dallas Broker, if you um, have the one with the, sh the straight handle, you can still use that for self-defense. Does it fall into the same classification category as one with the crook? Then the answer is, I don't believe it does. But if you go to the first link below, you go to the Cane Masters website, there's a card there, a palm card that you carry that answers all the questions for you. And, but that's what this basic is. So or all, all this crook here, as opposed to the long thing, can you use them the same way? Absolutely. Will you be able to spin it in the same way? I don't know. Does it matter? Because when we get into self-defense, we're not spinning it for self-defense. This is just the training, like a boxer jumping rope, like a boxer hitting the bags in the boxing gym. When you get into the strikes, which we're going to go over, we're going to have four basic categories of self-defense strikes with the walking cane. So when you ask, can you defend yourself with a walking cane or can you defend yourself with a cane? Absolutely yes. I'm going to show you how in just like two minutes. But I want to talk about the knife and the distance that the cane puts the knife away from your body. So the, the cane has this wood. This one's wood. This is the Cane Masters Oak Training Cane, my favorite to train with because it's inexpensive, it's very durable, it hits extremely hard. This is gonna shatter bone, and it doesn't bleed. So the cane doesn't bleed, and if you have a choice between trying to take a knife with your hands or defend with a hand against a knife or a big piece of oak, go for the long piece of oak. You're gonna create distance away from the knife, keep it away from your body. You have that reach advantage, and then you also have the advantage that this is not going to be, it might, you know, get a couple of scrapes on it. You sand that out and you're good to go with your self-defense cane, your cane master's oak training cane or whatever walking cane you have. Wood, metal, doesn't matter, matter what the material is. It's about distance and it's about this is not going to get hurt. You're, you would rather have them chop this up or cut against that than try to get your body. Now, the second part of that is you have the principles of self-defense. Oh, thank you, S. Wilkin just joined as a virtual student. I really appreciate you guys being here as members and joining. That really helps me keep this channel going. As we talk about can you defend yourself with a walking cane, I want to show you the basic techniques. But first, let me show you this one, which is my favorite everyday carry. Now, I have some everyday carry things that are important to me. I'm going to do an everyday carry video soon. What else I carry besides this for the cane? Things like that palm sticker, the Yawara, also known as the Kubaton, right? The keychain. I also carry things in my car to break the window if we go into the water. I carry all kinds of emergency equipment in the car. I'll go about over that, but this is my everyday carry cane. This is the one that's with me in the car. It sits right next to me on the passenger seat, and that brings me to the chair. Now, you might be in a chair, confined to a chair of you know, because, that, because of mobility issues, you're still able to defend yourself, strike, jab, do a lot of damage with your walking cane if you're in a chair. Maybe you're sitting at the uh, bus station or waiting for the subway, you're sitting on the plane, you have your cane here, you can still immediately destroy the target for self-defense. We're gonna go over those techniques in a second. But I carry it in my car, not as I'm driving, I'm gonna get in some incident with somebody, but when I stop and I get out for gas or I have to go into a neighborhood I'm not or sure of, especially if I have my kids with me or my family with me, I can then open the car door and get out with my walking cane and immediately have a protection tool. This one 
has this nasty tooth. We're gonna to talk about how to use that tooth to rake the skin, the eyes right out of their face for self-defense. It also has this paracord that allows you to keep it a better grip when you get hot and sweaty or bloody for self-defense. Go into that. It also has this wrist strap so that if it slips out of your hand, it's back in your hand as soon as possible. But it has this teardrop design. And you can see what this is compared to this one on that first link below. If you wanna see the Cane Masters, the, I think it's the gold standard. Cane Master Canes, there's nothing better than a Cane Master Cane when it comes to Cane self-defense. You can't beat them for their price, the value, and the features. But this is like a dull blade. And that blade coming into the body is going to just shatter bone. It's going to crack the skull for self-defense. And it's going to be very effective in your cane self-defense. Every once in a while it does that, you just push it back in. It's extremely effective. And again, that tooth into the ear, into the eyes, into the nose, reach up and grab the back and rip them down. That's a very effective self-defense cane. I'm going to move that to the side. That's my everyday this is my everyday training cane. This is the Cane Masters Dojo training cane in oak. You can get it in hickory too. I just like oak because I like the way the wood feels in my hand. Now, let's talk about four basic strikes for self-defense with your cane. And as we go through, we're also gonna talk about cane self-defense principles. Number one is situation awareness. Number two is getting a better position. So from this position, I have the cane between me and the threat, and I'm gonna thrust. I like to start with the thrust because I want to try to maintain distance away from the target, especially if he has a knife or I don't know if he has a knife or not. I don't want him to get close enough to be able to use that effectively against me. So from here in this position, I put my weight on it. I pop it up and I'm in a better position. I'm going to drop the camera just a little bit as I move back and forth. Don't get nauseous. I like to give a warning before I do that so that I don't shake it all up. But I'm, I have my weight on the cane. I'll only grab the other cane too, because this is, this is another reason. Can you defend yourself with a cane? If your question is, well, I need my cane to lean on. I need my cane to mobile, be, uh, get around, right? I need my cane to be able to walk. Take two canes, put a cane in the other hand, and now all of a sudden you can strike, strike very effectively, create distance with one, your weight on the one cane, your other hand, is very effectively defending yourself with the other cane. So I love the question, can you defend yourself with a cane? I love to say yes. And they say, but wait a minute, what if I need my cane to lean on? And if I lift it up, I'm gonna fall. That's where I say, go for the second cane. And if you go for like a cane like this, again, the links below, these are inexpensive, get two of them, put one in each hand and then defend yourself and train. We do a lot of training here in person, just leaning on the one getting the balance, and then practicing, if it's possible, on the other. And if it's not possible, it's not possible. But find out what's possible for you. Can you defend yourself with a cane? The answer is going to be yes. You just might have to figure out how. You'll figure out how, and I'll help you. Just reach out. Let me know. Go to Pasquinelli.com. Uh, Pasquinelli.com. Sorry, my words are a little fast today. But there's a contact box. Contact me. Ask me any question. I would love to help. Now, from here... In this position, leaning on the cane as if you're using it, because I want you to train like you're going to use it for real, get in a better position. The cane goes between you and the threat. The first one is a thrust right into the face or the neck or the solar plexus or the groin. And this is how I want you to train. I want you to train thinking in terms of what are the targets you're going to remove or destroy. This goes back to the principles of self-defense, but the basic idea is strike something, their ability to see their ability to breathe temporarily through their nose, their ability to breathe permanently through their throat, their ability to stand upright going through the solar plexus or breathe, going into the, between the belly button and the private parts right in the middle. That'll put them right on the floor for self-defense. So from here, first one is a thrust with one hand or with two hands. Two hands are always going to be better than one when it comes to the cane. Now, I'm going to say this again. Two hands. Can you defend yourself with a cane? Yes. If you're not as strong with one hand, get the second hand on it and just let them run into the cane. Your whole body is behind it. Here's the principle of self-defense. You're using your body to move through the target. You're, however much your body weighs, all of that is being generated into the tip of that cane, the smallest point right into their vital spots, their targets that are gonna force them back. 
you're going to create that distance. So number one is the thrust, asking yourself, what can you remove or destroy? Eyes, right? Eyes, go right for the eyes. Their ability to see, their ability to breathe. Temporarily through their nose, smash the nose, the blood comes out, they're sucking their own blood down in the throat for self-defense. This is what you want. Teeth out their mouth, loose, the pain that's involved going in through the throat. That's permanent self-defense. Only use that if you have to, right? But right here in the solar plexus, thrust is first. Number two is shove. Thrust and shove. Thrust is with the tip or, in this case, this big knuckle, right? That big hammer. You can also thrust with that side. If you bring it up here, you have to step in with the other one because you missed them with the first one. Step in with that second one like a rifle butt strike. That's a thrust. Then after that is a shove. And I call a shove from here to here like you're doing push-ups. And bring it all the way in and all the way out. If their hands are on you and they've closed the gap, you bring it up here, bring it in right to the throat. Bring it up. Their hands are on here. They're screaming, spitting in your face. They're choking your neck. Bring this down on their arms. Their hands are going to go in this position, down like this, and then take their teeth out of their mouth or their throat or right into their chest or wherever you can hit them, right? So from here, I have thrust, and then here, shoving. Now, from this position in shoving, I want you to think of boxing them, punching to the head, right? Think of this, smashing the temple, smash the temple over and over again. Smashing, one, two, three, four, four times. And then go back into a thrust right through the midsection. Practice that combination. Can you defend yourself with a cane? Yes, if you practice. Can you defend yourself with a walking cane? Yes, if you do combinations in practice. Bring it up here, shove, box them a little bit, and then step in and thrust again right through their throat, right through the nose for self-defense. Thrust is first. Can you defend yourself with a walking cane? Yes, if you learn how to thrust, you learn how to shove. And number three, you learn how to slash. And these are the order that I like to practice them. These are the order I want you to get proficient in. I want you to learn how to defend yourself with a walking cane using thrusts, using shoves, and then using slashing motions. Slashing motions. And slashing, it sounds as if you're cutting them. It's really about the motion. I want you to have this sliding motion, arcing motion, coming from the shoulder out, from the shoulder out, from the other shoulder. Always practice from your shoulder so your strikes are always in front of your body. Fight from behind your cane, fight from behind your sticks. From here, slashing, slashing. But think about what's happening. This Cane Masters Oak training cane, oak against bone, against flesh. It's gonna compress the flesh, uh, causing a contusion, big bruise, opening of the skin, sp uh, splitting of the muscles, and then it's gonna hit that bone. And it's just gonna ping, shatter that bone in half for self-defense. So from here, you thrust it, and then you shove them. Maybe you did a couple of boxing motions, and then you brought it to your shoulder, straight down, and the other side. From here, maybe it's the temple. Maybe you hit them so hard, you knock them out, turn their uh, operating system off, turn off that computer. You don't have to worry about it if they have a knife or not. You create a distance. They came closer, you shove them back from your shoulder right into the temple, fight's over, you win. Can you defend yourself with a walking cane? Yes, fight's over, you win, because you practice those first three, these slashing motions. And the last one is one of my favorites. It's that big, nasty tooth. Now this is unique to the Cane Master's cane. Other canes have a tooth, but the Cane Master's cane made out of oak right there, that's just so hard. That's a hard piece of wood in a bevel and think about sticking that into that ear, pulling that ear off, coming through the eyes, the eye popping right out for self-defense, taking the flesh right off the face for self-defense, the nose removed for self-defense, the teeth just come out like popcorn, self-defense, through the neck, in through the muscles in the back, in through the chest, maybe ripping half that bicep right off the arm for self-defense. And it's this motion here, it's raking raking, just coming through. If I'm here and I pop it up, and I have to rake it down, or maybe you did the thrust, and you did the shove, and you boxed them a little bit, right? And then you did the slash, but then you have to reach out and rip, and that's your final motion to end the fight for self-defense. Fight's not over till you win, but can you defend yourself with a walking cane? Unquestionably, yes, absolutely. 
If you're in a, a wheelchair, I don't know why I couldn't think of that earlier. You're in a wheelchair, you're confined to a chair, or you're just sitting on the park bench. Can you defend yourself with a walking cane? Yeah, you can swing it up here. You can jab that guy there, you can bring it here. You can reach up, break, bringing it straight down. You can assist yourself getting up using two canes like we did earlier. Can you defend yourself with a walking cane? Yes, it's got a crook. It's made, this one's made out of wood. This is that Cane Master's cane. The Americans with Disabilities Act say you can take it anywhere. The HIPAA laws in the United States say they can't ask you why. And again, if you go to that first link below and you want to read what that is, there's a card there. Go to one of the canes, click on the button that says buy a cane. Don't buy a cane if you don't want to, but read the card that comes with it and it's going to spell it out. If you need to, write it down. You don't want to spend the 10 bucks for the card or whatever it is. Write it down on your own. Stick it in your wallet. Someone asks you, hey, why do you need that cane? You pop it out and you say, well, according to this piece of paper here, you can't ask me that. And it's true. You are protected in this country. It's unique to the United States. But like I said, a lot of places have similar laws. The cane, practicing with the cane improves health and wellness. I like to lean forward and just do tiny little motions at first with my students. When you work with me here in person and you haven't been mobile with your legs, you got the knee injury, you had a torn tendon, you have aged poorly, you haven't taken care of yourself, you've eaten like crap, and I'm not calling you out. I'm just saying this happens to all of us, right? And now you say, well, my legs don't work like they used to. I got lower back pain, my knees, my ankles, my hips, my this, my that. I get it. I work with you all the time. So what I'm going to say is sit in the chair, lean into your cane, lean, lean, and then push yourself up with your arms. Your arms are going to get stronger. Your belly is going to get stronger. Your legs are going to get stronger. You're going to lean out. All of those issues that you're blaming on age have nothing to do with age. Maybe a little bit more lifestyle. They're going to start to go away. So can you defend yourself with a cane? Yes. And you're going to get lean. You're going to get strong. You're going to get fighting fit and you're going to be able to move. Can you defend yourself with a cane if you're a senior? Yes. Cane self-defense for seniors is a real thing. Cane self-defense for seniors has been around forever, but it's not just for seniors. Uh, wounded warriors. Cane self-defense for wounded warriors. Great idea. Cane self-defense for women, but cane self-defense for anybody because of the accessibility. You can take it anywhere you go. You, they're not allowed to ask you, do you need it? Maybe your knee does hurt, right? My knees sometimes hurt, my hips sometimes hurt, and I wish I had my cane, or I do, and just take a little of the weight off. But that also allows you to practice, getting in that better position. Thrust, shove, box them a little bit, right? Think about elbows. And this all comes from weapon retention. Can you defend yourself with a cane against a stronger person? Yes. Can you defend yourself with a cane if they have a knife? Yeah, we talked about that. You've got that distance, that length advantage. It doesn't cut. It cuts. It doesn't bleed, right? That bleeds. You cut one of those, you're in big trouble. You cut in here, you cut in that femoral artery, you're dead. From here, you don't know if they have that knife or not. Keep them at bay. Keep them off. And then when they come closer, shove them. And then if they get too close, box them in the head, right? Smash them. And then as they back up, slash. And then finally reach out and rake. That's why you can defend yourself with a cane. So the next time you find yourself asking the question, can you defend yourself with a cane or anybody else, please share this video. Share it with other people who have asked this question. It's a very common question now. The world's a more dangerous place. I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm just reading the news articles. I know you are too. And you see it. You saw in Los Angeles. You saw in New York. A bunch of the protesters about what was happening in Israel. They're out looking for people who, they're looking for uh, people who, may visit the, uh, uh, the synagogue, right? They're coming from, uh, the, you know, Saturday. They're, they're coming from the Chabad Center. They're walking home, as they often do. And now people are pulling up in cars, jumping out, wanting to fight them. All they have is a walking cane. That's better than nothing, right? Or, and before that, and still, I mean, I don't have to get into this. It's all, it seems political, but it's not. The craziness is that there's a lot more physical attacks for a lot of different groups. Now you can say, you know, what about Asians? What about Jews? What about um, people who are just trying to have a nice dinner and the political pro protesters come out with their skateboards and their megaphones and they start intimidating people and sitting down at your table and trying to eat your food to try to provoke a fight. And you say, well, all I have is my walking cane. You know, back up. You don't have to like me, but you can't, 
you can't touch my stuff. Get out of my, for self-defense as they lunge in, right? And that's what this is. It's a self-defense tool. It's a self-defense device that's also a mobility device. It's a medical device. You can take it anywhere you go. So can you defend yourself with a walking cane? And if you have the Cane Masters cane, the link is below. Absolutely, 1,000% yes. Oh, one real quick thing. Nothing to do with this, except kind of. On Netflix, I turned on Netflix on the weekend. I was a little under the weather. I'm watching this show, and it's about spy masters. It's called Spycraft on Netflix. It's a new series. And the main guy who's talking, the executive producer, get this big red tie, Keith Melton, who makes the Cane Masters canes. And it's just a funny coincidence, but if you're looking for a great show, go watch that show. I'm not going to get paid anything. He's going to get the money. But if you want to go see, um, or about, if you have any interest in spycraft, this guy's like the number one spy guy in the world. Go, and he also happens to own Cane Masters, and he's a fifth degree black belt in Cane Mastery or whatever. Go check it out. Keith Melton on Netflix. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit.